Hi everybody, Tim O'Neill here from Norvice again. And tonight we're going to tie one of my favorite shad flies. <clears throat> it's shad season now, fish are in the river, and it, it is definitely time to, uh, to go after them. So one of the most popular um, lures, I guess we'll call it, in, in the world of gear fishing for shad is called a shad dart. And I'm sure you have seen them. They're typically a two-toned uh, white and red with a little fur coming out of the back. Just a, a basic nondescript, nondescript kind of, of jig. And um, this fly that we're going to tie tonight is my interpretation of the shad dart, but it's something that we can tie in the spirit of a fly. So I've got a, uh, we're going to start with a Mustad 3366. And I'm going to put on two medium cones. Okay, but the way I put these cones on, a little bit different. We put the first one on like normal, the same way you would put the cone on, or like a, a cone-headed woolly bugger or something like that. And I'll show you this here in a sec. The second one we put on the opposite way. So on your first cone, the little end goes on the hook point first, and it goes up on top of the um, up on the uh, shank of the hook. On your second cone, the big end goes on first, and it goes up on the hook shank. So the cones, the two big ends, wind up being back to back to one another. And when we get done, this is going to give us the um, the hourglass shape that the the shad dart has, and, and it'll be very very a close um, duplication of, of that particular fly. So let me get this in the hook. It's a little tough when you get the cones on the hook to see where the where the hook shank is, is level. And we tie this in. This one's going to be gold and red. We tie it in silver and blue and we tie it in chartreuse and black. Those are the three the three colors that we typically tie it in. So here I've got my Mustad 3366. It is a size six hook and I've got my two cones on. I've got my one, the, the front cone is, is placed on regular and it goes all the way up against the front of the uh, front of the hook against the back of the eye. And then the other cone is put on reverse. So it's put on the opposite way and it slides up and the big end or the, the, the bell end, if you will, of the two cones are kind of butted up against one another. Now I'm going to take some some 6 aught red wax thread and I'm just going to start start a little thread right here behind the um, behind the cones. And then we're going to take some gold crystal flash. And I'm going to pull out about 3 or 4 strands out of the pack. And I'm going to clip them off. Okay, so I've got four strands of gold, gold crystal flash. I'm going to fold them in half. I'm going to clip them again. So now I've turned four into eight. And now I'm going to take these eight strands and I'm going to place them in the middle of my thread. I'm going to fold them over. And I'm going to take the thread and I'm going to run these right up on top of the shank of the hook. And I want to put this right behind the cones. Now don't don't worry about if the cones aren't together just yet. I'm going to show you how to fix that. Okay. And it's getting a little let me lay that down just a little bit. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to take that step and I'm going to duplicate it on the bottom of the hook shank. So we're going to put crystal flash on the top and the bottom. So we take four four long strands out of the pack, clip them off, fold them in half, four becomes eight, and if you get five, don't worry about it, don't think that the shad can count. So now I've got eight strands, and I'm going to fold them in around the shank of the hook, around the thread, and I'm going to bring them up right to the bottom of the hook shank and I'm going to tie those in like so. Now I do want to I'm going to take my 
bodkin here and I'm going to split this so it goes around the shank or around the um, the bend and the point of the hook. One that's stuck there. There, oh, no, that comes on this side. There we go. Okay, now I'm just going to take my thread and I'm going to latch these down. Okay, so now my crystal flash is tied in. It's not going anywhere. Okay, and now what we're going to do as we're building this, this thread up right here behind these two cones, it is creating tension and it's pushing these two cones forward. And eventually we're going to use the thread to build up enough tension that these cones will stay mated together, the, the two big ends together, and they will stay up against the eye of the hook. So I'm going to take the vise and I'm just going to spin it. And I'm laying down some thread and I'm just kind of working my way back and forth. And that gives us a nice little, there you go. Now those cones, I, I can't even spin them with, with my fingers. And it gives us a nice little red accent in the middle of the fly. And I'm just smoothing that body out a little bit right now. And we'll take our whip finish tool. And I'll do a couple of three turn whip finishes. This is a great fly for high water. It's very heavy. You can use two standard cones. You can use a standard and a tungsten cone. You can use two tungsten cones. And if you really need to get down, you can put the cones on before you push them together. You can wrap some lead wire in between them and then push them together. And you've got a real, real heavy fly that um, doesn't have a lot of surface area to it. And it'll really drop like a stone. Now, we're going to finish this area off. We've got a lot of thread wraps out here, and, and they can be a little delicate. Um, shad flies, typically you're catching a lot of fish per fly, so you want to you want to make them as durable as possible. So I've got a little Solarez bone dry here, and I'm going to take my brush, and I'm going to brush that on the threads. I'm going to completely cover up all those threads with the bone dry. Okay, put the cap back on so we don't spill it. And I'll take the vise and I'll just, just slowly spin the vise just a little bit. And all that does is help that, um, that bone dry kind of work its way around the whole fly. And then when I get what I'm looking for, I'll just take the torch and I'll hit it. Spin the vise. And there you go. Now that's, that's hard as a rock. Very, very durable. And we'll take the fly out of the vise. And I'll just kind of work these fibers a little bit, just so that they're kind of evenly distributed around the uh, around the shank of the hook. And I'll pull them back. And when I get I get about the length that I want, shad are notorious for short striking, so you don't want a very long tail on your flies. I'm just kind of gathering these all together, and I'm just going to cut them off. Just give them a quick glance with the with the scissors and there is O'Neill's dart. Thanks guys. Have a great day.